Uh, as far as bad news, though, do you think there were any U.S. players who saw their stock drop over the last international window? Great question, because when production put this question out, you know, immediately I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, we didn't have a, a great games, you know, not mm -hmm. one game, but two games. And I'm started thinking, like, all right, who really missed out here? And then I thought of it. It's the players who were called in who had to pull out. You know, we can mm -hmm. go in and say, like, a Luca De La Torre who may lose feeding because it's outside, you know, uh, out of mind, you know, out of sight, out of mind, excuse me. And Tyler Adams explodes in, and maybe Eunice struggled a bit, but he was still there. Uh, so maybe you could say you'll miss out. And then you can say, well, Josh Sargent. Like, Josh Sargent went from being the hottest striker in the pool since the new year, 10 goals, no other player even coming close to him, a shoe in to, to play some in, this, in these two games and maybe do something to having to pull out and the guy who he pulled out for, Haji Wright, gets into the camp and explodes onto the scene. Comes off the bench against Jamaica, scores two goals, and then starts the final of the Nations League versus Mexico. And all of a sudden, instead of it being a three-horse race where a Faller and Balogun maybe was letting a bit go of that starting number nine role, or Ricardo Pepe not playing so much with PSV, it's just you three fighting now to see who can be that starting number nine. You include another forward into that mix with Haji Wright. You know, I think it's the guys who, who initially were called up and, and couldn't go that you're going to see their stock go down. It, it's You just added more competition into this table. Hmm. So it sounds like you don't think of the 23 guys that were actually called in, any at all saw their stock go down, right? You thought it was kind of a, a positive window in that regard. No, there's a few players that I didn't think had good outings. Okay. I, I don't think we saw the best of Eunice Musa. You know, okay. I, yeah, I don't think uh, necessarily um, a Miles Robertson or a Chris Richards did wonders for themselves. That's why when Cesar Montes was, you know, in that starting 11, I was like, I, I could argue that, you know, Chris right, Richards, by default. <laughs> Chris Richards would have a little bit more to say, you know, by default, because he played two games than uh, Cesar Montes, who didn't look so great in this tournament. But yeah, uh, there's a few players, nobody where I would think drastically changed their stock in Greg Berhalter's eyes um, in this window. All right, so when I was asked this question, I thought, what was the biggest change in the U.S.? And we noticed, like, a massive difference in the performance from the Jamaica game to the Mexico game. And so I think if I look at it that way, the five guys who started against Jamaica that didn't start in the final against the United States, where the team played so much better, I think their stock takes a hit. Those five are Joe Scally, Miles Robinson, Eunice Musa, who you mentioned, Malik Tillman, uh, and Falaire and Balligan. Of Joe those Scally. five, yeah. I think the two that are the most important are one that you mentioned, Eunice Musa, but to me, it's got to be Falaire and Balligan uh, because we keep coming back to that nine position and how important it is. He got the first start. He got the first crack here uh, in this window. He was given the start against Jamaica, and I don't think we can say he took advantage of it. Certainly not when compared to what Haji Wright did, right? Because when we're talking about the number nines, we're not just talking about what Balligan does, we're talking about what the other guys do. So Haji Wright comes into this camp as the fourth guy on the depth chart, because remember, he's not called in. He gets the minutes at the end of the Jamaica game. He scores two goals to, I think, very well taken goals. He's the hero. He's the reason then that they're in the final. So to me, Haji Wright shot stock shoots up. Balligan's has to drop. And I think, her, um, of all the guys, the one who you would say might have actually lost the starting job that they had coming into this window is Balligan. Because if we look at what's left, and we mentioned this on the Monday show, there's not another call-up until we're all gathered in June for the actual Copa America prep games. And I don't know that I count on Balligan, given everything that's happened at Monaco, to catch fire again, certainly not what the other guys are doing. So in this window, I think Balligan's stock dropped, and I don't know if he's got time to make it up. That's why I picked him as the guy whose stock dropped the most here. That's a great shout. You know, Joe Scally's another player who didn't do well, but Joe Scally's not going to realistically overtake Serginho Dest. You know, right. he, he's trying to solidify that number two spot. Who's It's his by default. So Joe Scally right there, I understand what you're, what you're saying. But Fowler and Balogun's a great shout. This is a player that many had pegged in as the clear and obvious number nine. Mm -hmm. Not my words. I believe those are actually your words. And, and, yes. and I'm not going to fault you here because a and, lot, and a lot of people. And Greg Berhalter started him. A and lot Greg Berhalter started him. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still seem to, theme, still seem to think that 
Fowler and Balogun is that player right now. And he may be that player in the future or when he has confidence. But he's not been confident with Monaco. Mm. He's not been good with Monaco. He's not had the same season he had last season with Monaco. And in this version of the U.S. Men's National Team, that nine... I don't think it's a great fit for Fowler and Balogun. And people can say he's had limited playing time with the likes of Gio Reyna, who's a very creative force and can unlock defenders and put him in great positions. Whatever the case may be, he's not proven it when he's gotten the opportunity to start. We've seen more eggs laid from Fowler and Balogun than highlight moments. So I understand where you're going with this. And, and this yeah. is why I was saying that Josh Sargent, out of sight, out of mind, he took a stock hit as well. You opened the door, and maybe to no fault of his own because he was injured, but now Haji Wright's in this mix. So now it's a four-horse race. And who's to say that tomorrow there's another forward, maybe a Brandon Vasquez who comes in, and because of the skill set he has, the physical traits, and, and he does something in a game and scores, that that can't be another fifth player coming in there, or whoever the case may be. You leave the door open, somebody's going to come through it, and that was done. Yeah. A couple months ago, we were debating, was there a race or not? I'll hold my hand up here. Now I think there's definitely a race. I don't think there's any more debate um, as far as there being a clear number one in that number nine pool. There just isn't. And uh, Balogun has had his chances, but so far hasn't been able to take advantage.